how's it going guys? Welcome to my channel Andy the Django. I hope you guys enjoyed your holidays and had a good start to the new year. Let's start 2018 with a new video on this channel. In today's video, we are going to have a look at a small PC case that is extremely cheap, made by an unknown brand called AVP. That's it in the corner over there. I thought I'd show you guys the box. I bought this case for only £25 a few weeks ago online. Some of you are probably wondering why is it so cheap? So without further ado, let's find out. First off, I'm not really sure how to pronounce this, but this is the Hyperion or Hyperion EV33W, a micro ATX and mini ITX PC case in white. It's also available in black, so I'll link both of them in the video description below. I bought this case because I was intrigued by its low price, decent looking design and small size. It's 35 centimeters in length, 27 in width and 30 in height. I'm not sure what kind of metal the frame is made from, but it feels sturdy enough. It has a glossy finish effect to it, which I'm not a big fan of. And the front is made of plastic, which features a rather unusual design on the right side with its random rigid lines and a removable plate for a DVD or Blu-ray drive. I personally wouldn't have any use for this and would have preferred a cleaner look without the cutout lines for the drive. The logo looks slightly wonky and in person, this case does not look like its product image which has a more silvery finish to the front panel. Fortunately, that doesn't bother me, as I prefer an all-white case to match my PC setup anyway. One thing I do like about the front panel is the I.O. area. It's simple and it looks pretty cool. You can easily access this case by removing these thumb screws. Inside, it looks very spacious compared to my current PC case, as this case can fit either a mini ITX or micro ATX motherboard. Let's have a look at the cooling options. To the left, you can fit an 8cm case fan. To the right, you can fit either two 8cm case fans or two 12cm case fans. If you flip the case on its side, the front ventilation is actually located at the bottom. Inside the case, there seems to be lots of options for threading your cables through. I'm not too sure how I feel about this, because I feel like once all the components are inside the case, it might be a lot of space left over, in which this area could probably be used to mount a hard drive or two. But on the plus side, if you're looking to put in a radiator, there'll be plenty of space for that. One really cool feature about this case is, is that it has dual chambers. So let's go on the other side of the case and have a look. First impressions, there seems to be a lot of space on this side. Let's quickly check out the cooling options. To the left, you can install an 8cm case fan. And to the right, you can also install an 8cm case fan. In this cage area, you can fit a 2.5 or 3.5 inch hard drive. And over here, this is where the DVD or Blu-ray drive will go, which I personally think is a waste of space, and I'll probably end up using it to put a hard drive in. Towards the back of the case, you can fit a full-size power supply, which is really cool. And in the bottom right, you have enough slots to fit two PCI Express slots, meaning you can fit two graphics cards in here if you want. All right, what I'm going to do now is take apart my current PC and use the components in there to fit it into this new case to see how well it fits and performs. However, I won't be using my CPU cooler from my current PC, as it won't fit in this PC case. So instead, I will replace it with this CPU cooler made by Arctic. And I'll also replace all the case fans too. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to find out more information about these fans. So next, I'm going to show you a quick clip of what it's like to build inside this case. Let's go!
that's what it's like to build inside this case. It wasn't as easy as I thought it would be, as I did have a few issues. I'll go through each one of them in a moment. But before I do that, there's one thing I need to do. Let's put a side window panel on this PC case. I don't know about you guys, but I just love seeing the insides of the PC with all its components. Ah, that's better. Now, turn on the computer and let there be light. Okay, let's start with the negatives on this case. Design wise, it's not the best looking case. Like I said earlier on, I'm not a big fan of the gloss effects and the DVD drive cutout at the front. But saying that, it's not the worst thing in the world. The protruding side panels should be completely flat, if I'm honest. They look like the sides of a microwave oven. I had issues with fitting my mini graphics card into the case, as this part of the frame got in the way. But I was able to lift the frame slightly to get the card in. So just be wary on how wide your graphics card is. The other problem was plugging my display port into the graphics card. This part of the frame had a protruding bit of metal so my cable couldn't connect it properly. So I had to gently push down a graphics card to fit it. The inside layout could be better if there were more modular options. For instance, if someone is not planning to install a radiator, they could at least install hard drives here. The same goes for the other side. This DVD drive cage just takes up all the space, which could have been good for hard drive storage or better cable management. Thermal wise, the graphics card is not well ventilated, but it's capable of working in this case properly. I was getting a maximum of 78 degrees when I ran the heaven benchmark on max settings, and roughly 74 degrees when playing games. The result was the same with either the original side panel with the vent on, or the window side panel I used. Fortunately, it's nothing the card can't handle. I don't understand why the case doesn't have any ventilation holes on the bottom panel, with an option to fit extra case fans as there is clearly plenty of room for it. Now the positives. Design wise, I personally think this case looks good. It's the perfect size allowing me to build into the case without having to take the whole case apart. And I really like the separate chambers for the PC parts. It definitely makes cable management a lot easier. It's great that you can fit either micro ATX or mini ITX motherboard, giving you the option to install a second GPU should you wish to. And better yet, this case can fit a full size graphics card, which could possibly be better for thermals, as it would have more fans than the mini graphics card I'm currently using. Thermal wise, the CPU is very well ventilated. I was getting on average 50 degrees on the heaven benchmark and gaming, even when I was using a cheaper CPU cooler and case fans by Arctic. Best of all, this case cost under 25 pounds, so it was super cheap. I would say this is for someone who is after a small build, possibly on a budget, that has the option to further upgrade later down the line if they wish to. Or it can be used for a high-end PC build with two graphics cards and water cooling options. What build type or parts would you use in this case? Let me know what you guys think about this case in the comments below. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Remember to hit that like button if you like this video, as it does help to know if you guys want to see more of the videos I make. Share it with someone who might also like it, and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, click on the link below in the video description for more info on the case and other parts I've used in this video. Thanks again for watching guys, I'm Andy Django, and I'll see you in the next video.